हेलो एवरी वन नाइल बी टॉक यू टू यू अबाउट प्लूरल इफ्यूजन तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट एस सी वट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्लूरल इफ्यूजन इट इज फ्लूड इन द प्लूरल स्पेस दैट मीन्स बिटवीन द टू लेयर ऑफ प्लूरा इफ फ्लूड इज देयर दैट वी कॉल एज प्लूरल इफ्यूजन वेल वी ब्रॉडली क्लासीफाई दिस इन टू टू टाइप्स वन इज ट्रांसुडेट वेन द अमाउंट ऑफ प्रोटीन इन द प्लूरल फ्लूड इज लेस देन थ्री ग्राम पर्सन But if the amount of protein is more than three gram per cent, then we call it to be exudate. And sometimes there can be both fluid and air in the pleural space. Then we call it to be hydro pneumothorax. If the blood is there in the pleural space, then we call it as hemothorax. If pus is there, we call it as empyema. If chyle, that is lymph with fat, we call it as chylothorax. When both blood and air in the pleural space, then we call it as hemopneumothorax. This is a beautiful X-ray chest of left pleural effusion, and and there is a hydro pneumothorax. well how to differentiate between the two when we have hydro pneumothorax we get a straight line like this but if you are getting a pleural effusion then we get a curve like this is not straight okay this is all because of effect of gravity beautiful picture to differentiate between pleural effusion and hydro pneumothorax now transudate what are the causes this can be due to increase venous pressure like congestive heart failure constrictive pericarditis fluid overload this could be any condition where serum protein is low that is hypoproteinemia like cirrhosis of liver nephrotic syndrome or any condition which lead to malabsorption which lead to reduce serum protein then hypothyroid also lead to transudate now we talk about exudate where the pleural fluid protein is more than 3 g per cent this is due to increased leakiness of the pleural capillaries and this increased leakiness could be due to any cause of infection inflammation or malignancy so the causes are viral fever bacterial pneumonia tuberculosis pulmonary infarction or what we can say you it is usually due to secondary to pulmonary embolism rheumatoid arthritis bronchogenic carcinoma meek syndrome which is nothing but right pleural effusion with ovarian fibroma is a very frequently asked question is meek syndrome light criteria is one of the most important question cannot afford to forget this they are the for exudative pleural effusion has at least one of the following criteria pleural fluid of protein and serum protein ratio is sh should be more than 0.5 pleural fluid ldh serum ldh ratio should be more than 0.6 pleural fluid ldh should be more than 2/3 of upper limit of normal for serum ldh now what are the feature of tubercular pleural effusion all feature of exudate effusion which i discuss in the previous slides including light criteria other feature are it could be hemorrhagic that means blood in the pleural fluid presence of high tb marker very very important question the tb marker are adenosine deaminase so called ada the level should be more than 45 international unit per liter interferon alpha the gamma level should be more than 140 picogram per ml 
positive PCR for tuberculosis. Glucose level is equal to serum mostly, but sometimes maybe little less. But it is not markedly reduced, which is seen in bacterial pleural effusion. WBC count is increased, but predominantly small lymphocyte. That means mainly lymphocytosis occur. But very, very important point, presence of mesothelial cell more than 5% make diagnosis of tuberculosis effusion unlikely. This is a very, very important line. So, investigation chest x-ray, it's a much better x-ray. Classically, we are getting a curve in x-ray. This one has Ellis curve. You remember when I showed you photo of the hydronumothorac where we got a straight line. Here we are getting a curve like this thing. Okay. Ultrasound is a very good investigation for presence of pleural fluid and also guiding, uh, diet guiding, tapping of the pleural fluid. Okay. So you can see diaphragm. This is lung and this is the pleural fluid. Lovely investigation because pleural fluid can ultrasound can de can detect even 50 ml of the pleural effusion can be detected by ultrasonography. Biopsy we do in some cases if needed we use Abraham needle. This needle you should see very carefully. Look, the hole is at this place. Now, management of any case of pleural effusion, treat the basic cause. Otherwise, we can go for drainage. If the effusion is symptomatic, drain it repeatedly if needed. It is always should be removed very slowly. It may be aspirated in the same way as diagnostic tap or may can be used by so-called intercostal drainage. This is classically drainage bag. Just see, into the plural fluid, we have put a needle and the fluid is coming in the drainage bag. In an adult patient with plural fusion, the most appropriate site for a plural drainage is to put needle in the fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line. You again go back to this. Same, it is mixed axillary line, seventh intercostal space that needle is put. Well, plural resis. It is something to do to fuse two layers of pleura. When that means you are just removing the pleural space, this we do only for recurrent effusion. And what the drugs we use, for the material we use, tetracycline, bleomycin, plain talc, we can use it. They cause aseptic inflammation. Okay, and that cause causes fusion of the two layer of the pleura forever. Okay, thoracoscopic talc pleurodesis is the most effective for malignant pleural effusion. Well, friends, now I have some quick recall questions for you. Please stop the video and answer these questions. Questions are written in front of you. And for answer, please see the next slide. So the answer of the questions are given. Again, you can stop the video, read it. They are the last minute revision point. You have to revise this point a day before your exam. Thank you very much.